When my people arrived on the shores of Aotearoa from Hawaii six centuries ago, my ancestor Ngātoroirangi, high priest and chief of Te Arawa Canoe, journeyed inland to Taupo Moana, the heart of the North Island. He traversed the new country, making his peace with the spirits of the land. Coming on Mount Tohara, he decided to ascend it. From the summit, he looked on the beautiful Taupomuana, the inland sea, and bespoke the great mountain Tongariro to its south as sacred to his tribe. Atoroirangi claimed the lake for his descendants, my people. His gods warmed the earth below, and the great chief traveled on far across the magic land. Three hundred years later, the Pākehā came to New Zealand, and stories of this fabulous land drifted out across the oceans to the old world. And more men came in wonder. Today, visitors from many lands follow in their footsteps. of the geysers shows what fearsome powers lie far below. These forces breaking the Earth's crust are now being tapped and harnessed to provide steam for electric power. Seen in the distance, there is an ethereal beauty and grace in the floating plumes of steam.
Five miles away is Taupo town. Behind it, Mount Tauhara, from which Ngata Roy Rangi cast his spear. The town's growing fast these days. At the information office, they'll tell you that all sports are open to visitors. That goes for the kids' playground, too. The bowling green's next door. There's Yachty. You can hire anything from a rowboat to a luxury launch, with fishing tackle thrown in. Fishing licenses are cheap. The golf course isn't far away, and in the forest and surrounding country, there are plenty of wild pig and deer for rugged types. Natural hot pools are open all the year round. Geothermal steam provides central heating for the Wairaki Hotel. The young couple just arriving have planned a potted world tour from here. Not only is there every kind of sport handy, but while staying here you can visit a fantastic variety of scenic wonders. The hotel itself is a holiday playground. Next morning, the young couple are leaving early for a day skiing on Mount Ruapehu. It's also a boon to non-skiers, a way of seeing the magnificent views from the top without too much hard climbing. There's a gentle quality, a quietude in many of the lovely spots on the eastern shores of the lake. And above the sleeping waters, the legendary Mount Tauhara seems to float, as if it had recovered its ancient power of motion. But there's plenty of life on the beaches. Good swimming, too. The lake's safe. It's 25 miles long and 17 miles wide nearly 240 square miles of water, the largest lake in the Southern Hemisphere. 
It's 1,200 feet above the sea, and the clear air makes you feel wonderful. There's every kind of accommodation, from first-class licensed hotels to the do-it-yourself variety. You can be with the crowd, or you can have a beautiful spot on the lake shore to yourself. Nice trout. Fisherman doesn't need to be a liar here. At the Tucano Hotel at the southern end of the lake, a Scottish family arrives in holiday mood. Dad has a one-track mind. He wants to go fishing. But he'll have to make some concessions to the women folk. Jane's found herself a bow. Out of the cradle, into the water. That's how it is in New Zealand. From the hill road to the west, you look down across Tukanu. Further over the hills lie the rich rolling farmlands of the Tuwharetoa tribe, whose chief descends in a direct line from Ngataroi Rangi. Timber milled from the vast tribal forests provides finance for the farms. The village of Waihi is headquarters of the tribe. It's Sunday morning, and here among his people is the man whose forebear gave the mountains to the nation for a national park. Paramount Chief Hepita Heohil with his charming wife. The Scottish family is visiting the village. A stone's throw away from the church is the meeting house. Only a few years old, its carvings follow the ancient tradition and tell the stories of the tribe's ancestors. The young Maoris perform the hakas, war cries of the warriors of the past, for special occasions on the Marae. The old realize that these men live and work in a modern world alongside other New Zealanders, and that their own generation may well be the last to wear the proud mark of rank, the moko on the chin. The Maori, though Europeanized, retains the traditional reverence and respect for his elders. The burning mountains look down benignly on a scene of peace and beauty. The graceful kohai trees with arms uplifted, offering their gold to Rangi, the Sky Father. The red glory of the Pahutukawas and the dainty Manaka, a shower of snowflakes on the bush. And in the spring, the miles of wild lupin and broom along the lake shore. Sun-drenched bays and inlets are looped across the top of the lake. Trollers bask placidly, till the scream of the reel brings them back to reality. On the western shore, you can have a beach in solitude if you wish. Here, the towering cliffs covered with virgin bush contrast with the other side of the lake.
How'd you like to fish off your own front lawn? Some blokes have all the luck. He's got what he went out for. A fine fat trout for lunch. Dad's playing hooky today. He made it at last. Fishing is a quiet fever. traditional New Zealand fishermen's meal and no frills. As the shadows lengthen, their homeward bound, well content. But the famous picket fence of anglers fly fishing in the rip at the mouth of the Waitahanui River is there long after the day has died. Six major rivers and 40 streams flow into Lake Taupo, which is one of the great trout fishing centers of the world. The Waikato River leaves the lake in a mood of serenity. But soon, rocky ravines crowd it and the mood changes to a wild turbulence. Wairake or Taupo, it's a comfortable day's drive right around the mountains. Classic in form and situation, these mountains are not high peaks of a chain, but a triple mountain mass, standing alone on a plain which completely surrounds them. The three central volcanoes are still mildly active. As the last day of your holiday draws to a close, you look back and remember. Fabulous contrasts of nature.
blend in a colorful mosaic, encircling the blue heart of the North Island, Taupo Moana. <laughs> 